Hey there folks, thanks for joining me today. I hope that you are doing well. We are in a pretty good place. It's uh, difficult to complain. It's getting towards the end of summer here in Mallorca. It is still super hot. Uh, you're lucky I've got a t-shirt on. Despite the heat, Victoria thought I should have a shirt on. We compromised on a t-shirt, probably for your benefit. Anyway, what we're gonna be looking at today are some of the different layout options that we considered for what will be our latest purchase. It's a pretty straightforward terrace property that we're considering for single lets, for flipping, for an HMO, or possibly even splitting into a couple of apartments. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you, just in terms of how we go through that design layout process, then hang around and whilst you're here, I'd obviously appreciate it if you give this video a like and if you think someone else would find it useful then feel free to share it as well. It would mean the world to me. You might remember in our last video we looked at some of the financial options for this same project depending on the strategy that we were going to look at, the different costs involved and also the different return on investments that each of those strategies would achieve. Again, looking at things like single lets, HMOs and flips. Now, what I need when it comes to looking at the sort of preliminary layouts are a couple of things. So I have got here a Sharpie, obviously, uh, some Tipex in case things go really wrong, we get into a real pickle, a couple of different versions of the layout. Well, they're all the same, uh, but we've got a couple of different sheets there because we're gonna be looking at a couple of different strategies. And just point of interest, I suppose, we always like to start off on paper with some plans that we can just doodle away on and get a couple of different options without committing things to either AutoCAD or Illustrator or whatever you like to use on a computer. I find it's just easier to get a paper copy and scribble away. It's how we start all of our design options. And then a nice chunky book to lean on, uh, just so Victoria doesn't shout at me for getting Sharpie on the table. In this case, it's Sailor's Knots and Crafts. I'm sure it's available in all good book retailers. But that's all we need. So with that being said, let's dig into some of the different options that we considered. So I've got my trusty overhead camera out again, and this time we are gonna start off with a single family home. Last time we differentiated between a flip where we were gonna sell it on and a single let, but when it comes to the design and the layout, they're gonna be fairly similar. We're looking at designing something for a single family to live in, whether they're renting it from us or buying it off us. Now, first thing I'm gonna say, the floor plan, it's a little bit blurry. That's the best that we could get off the estate agents. But you can see here, we're working with three stories. So we got two cellar chambers. This is the stairs down. Uh, entrance all here, so front door is here. Uh, lounge, dining room, kitchen, back door here. Uh, stairs down into the cellar. And then upstairs, you have got, this is the bathroom. You can't really read that. Uh, bedroom, 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 and then this is like a little walk-in wardrobe which has been nicked off the bathroom which originally would have come across here and been one single room. So the existing layout isn't too bad. It would work, it could work, but there are a couple of things that we considered. First of all, the master bedroom here at the front. Originally this would have been one big bedroom, but it's been split into two in order to create this three bedroom layer. The problem with it though, is it creates two small awkward rooms, which really isn't ideal. Switching it back into one room, obviously would turn it from a three bedroom into a two bedroom, which also isn't particularly ideal in terms of losing a bedroom, but it would be two double bedrooms rather than one double that we've got here and then two singles here. So that was something that we had to keep in mind. We also considered other ways that we could keep it as a three bed, but possibly be a better three bed. Um, so one option would be to turn the bathroom and this wardrobe back into a single room and then create, so if we put the door something like this, this would be a bedroom and then move the bathroom from the back of the house to the front and we could probably reduce the size of that and then make this bedroom a little bit bigger. So it would give us three double bedrooms so you'd have one, two and three which is 
probably a better layer in terms of bedrooms. The bathroom doesn't need to be huge, but it would give our plumber a headache in terms of getting the soil pipe out. The toilet would probably be here or maybe here on the back wall. So that means the drains are probably going to be here or maybe even in the backyard. And if we move the toilet to, let's say here, we then need to think about getting the soil pipe way back here. And the problem is this is a terraced house. So this is the neighbor's property. We can't come out here and we've got the stairs here. So we can't really run it through the house because we'd be going through the stairs. Fortunately though, it is an end terrace. You'd get the same if you had a semi-detached property. So we could potentially run it under the floorboards, depending on which way the joists run. We could run it like through here. And then this is an external wall. So we could then run it down the side of the house and with some fancy soil pipe work, we could possibly tee it into the drains here, something like that. So that could work. It wouldn't be the end of the world. There are also options to increase the floor area in two different locations. So the cellar, which is on the plans, uh, so we can look at that first. We could convert this to create habitable space, one or both chambers, and then put a room down here, like I say, at least in one of the chambers, along with a shower room. So we could have, I think the door is like here, so we could have this as a bedroom, say we've also got light at the front of the house there's a little light well uh, so we could actually get natural light down here and then we could turn the rest of this hallway which is probably a coal chute at some point into a bathroom with shower here a uh, little toilet little sink something like that could work or you could even make it an ensuite to give you a bit extra space you could have like toilet here leave the shower where it is flip them around whatever and have the sink in front of the toilet. So that'd be a good option because it could become a good guest bedroom. It could become a good bedroom for an older child, or it could also be used as another lounge or communal space. So it gives your buyer or your tenant options. The second place we could look at creating floor space is in the loft. Now, it's not shown on the original plans, but roughly speaking, I mean, it's going to be the width of the house. So we've got like that. Uh, and it's going to be, I mean, it's probably, if we look at usable head height, it's going to be something like that with the ridge in the middle of this space, front to back. Uh, so from there, and then it'd get too shallow this space to this space and this space to this space, the head height would be too low to be useful, maybe for some storage. But you know, we've got two knuckles of uh, attic space. We could easily on the first floor have, so the stairs come up this way from the ground floor to the first floor. Then you could come around here and then have stairs going up again this way, which would come up like this into the loft, very technical here, of course, and then have bedroom up here. So with this option, with the loft, it would either make it a four bedroom house, if you wanted to go one here, two, three, four, like we had on the original plan for the three bed, or you could have it as a large three bedroom house. So you could have one in the loft, you could have this as the second one, you could put the master back in. So that all became master bedroom. And then this is back to being the bathroom. So you've got one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and then a big family bathroom. All good options. Uh, you know, when we're doing flips and single lets, it's not so much about what's possible. The reality is we need to keep in mind what's actually gonna add the most value. So if we converted the cellar and the loft, for instance, it could be a great house, but we would definitely have overspent and we'd lose money. So something in between the three bedroom, possibly the four bedroom with the loft or the cellar could be a good option, but certainly for something like this type of project in this location where square footage isn't really at a premium, I wouldn't be overly worried about doing both of these. I'd probably do one or the other. 
In terms of determining the best layout, speak to your local agents to find out what's in demand. Uh, find out what's going to sell quickly, what's going to rent quickly, if you've got an idea of the strategy that you're looking for. Uh, and also look at the market, look at what's available on Rightmove to see, you know, for different size houses, whether it's a three bed or a four bed, how quickly are they selling, how much are they on the market for, how many of them are on the market. All of this should give you a good guide as to what the best layout would be. It is all going to be subjective. There is no right or wrong answer, or certainly we're never going to know what the right or wrong answer is because whichever option we choose, we will only know the results of that one. But if we went down the single let route, I would likely opt for moving the bathroom to create a three bedroom. So I'd move the bathroom from here to the front of the house to give me the one, two, and then three double bedrooms without having to go down the route of the loft or cellar conversion. As a flip, I'd probably lean more towards leaving the bathroom at the back, um, and then I would reinstate the master, so get rid of this wall here. Uh, so we would have one, two, and then probably go ahead and convert the cellar, because uh, it's not the obvious choice, but I've seen it done really well before, this idea. You could even have both, so you had uh, you know, a uh, lounge, here cinema room something like that and a bedroom down here that's adding a lot of square footage and if you're going to the effort of tanking one chamber uh tanking the second one's not going to be a huge additional cost um so it gives you a few more options and a bit more flexibility than a loft which is really only going to be a bedroom and it leaves the loft development potential for the buyer so they think they can add some value and if they pay you top dollar for the house as it is they can still get some cash out of it down the line if they decide that they want to convert the loft. The next option we considered was the HMO. So HMO, shared house, in this location most likely for young professionals and there is a ton of scope here when it comes to different HMO layers. So starting with the ground floor, which we didn't really look at changing with the single layer of the family home, this is perfect because we come in the front door and we have got a, a, an entrance into a hallway rather than straight into your lounge. And then we have got two separate reception rooms here, both a good size. Uh, we've then got the kitchen at the back. So the usual approach here would be to turn the front room into a bedroom. So let's draw a little bed here. And then we would keep this as the lounge, uh, you know, whatever layout you wanted, works well as a lounge space, it's, you know, it's, it's plenty big enough. Uh, and then we'd keep the back as the kitchen. So, you know, basically just a case of changing the use of this room, doesn't really require any structural alterations. Um, but what we could do, what we can't see on the plans is there's a chimney here, so we could potentially use that alcove to put in a little ensuite. So we have the door something like that, uh, we'd probably put the toilet on this outside wall to keep our plumber happy so soil pipe can go straight out there. Shower here and then sink in front of the door. So either a bedroom or a bedroom with ensuite. And then upstairs we've got a couple of options as well. When we're creating bedrooms for an HMO we need to keep a couple of things in mind. First of all there's a minimum width requirement of around about two meters and then there's a minimum overall size of the bedroom of six and a half square meters but our preference is a minimum of that's supposed to be eight square meters but the minimum like I say is 6.5 um, so we need to keep these sizes in mind as well. The eight square meters is a guideline, you can go smaller than that, but we find that that's the kind of minimum size you need to comfortably get a double bed and all the other furniture that we need. So, first thing I check is are all the rooms big enough? These ones at the back, yes, they're all fine, but the smallest one here, this is only 6.6 uh, .6 square meters. So technically it's big enough, but it doesn't really fit our minimum eight square meter guideline. Without changing anything, you know, if we wanted to do this on a budget, we could have three bedrooms, so leave the bathroom where it is at the back and turn this in, well, I say turn this into a bedroom, have that as a bedroom, have this and have this. Because this is compliant, even though it's not our preference, technically we could have a four bedroom HMO with two bathrooms. Big bathroom here shared between these three and bedroom downstairs with an ensuite. That could work out quite well on a relatively low budget. We could also move the bathroom again to create a larger fourth bedroom. So if we move the bathroom into here, again, we could reduce that. 
uh, to be a bathroom. So shower in front of the window or something like that, maybe the toilet there, whatever. Anyway, there are options here for this to be a bathroom for sure, um, which would give us a larger fourth bedroom. So this would become bedroom four, and it would also make this bedroom number two larger as well. So that would be my preference because I think bathrooms can be smaller bedrooms wherever possible we want them to be bigger and again in terms of structural alterations it's still not a huge deal we could even take it a step further and again put the stairs up here into our two knuckle long loft and have fifth bedroom up here so with a loft conversion we could have five bedroom hmo a couple of bathrooms would rent out pretty well i'm sure but actually with this house, I think there is a better option entirely. So we have got the cellar here. And whilst I don't like putting bedrooms in a cellar, they are great for communal space. So what I would do here is put the lounge and the kitchen both in the cellar, probably as open plan. So we'd get rid of this wall. Uh, you know, we'd have like a L-shaped kitchen, something like this. Uh, ba, ba, ba. that's a kitchen obviously unless you couldn't tell uh, and then you know like uh, so you've got a window you've got the window here uh, maybe TV on the wall here and you know a couple of sofas uh, sofa there sofa here maybe even a little dining table if we wanted to get fancy um, and I think that would be a really good open plan communal space I'd then make both of these reception rooms into bedrooms. So we've already got one here. To do this, we would need to keep access to the cellar. So what we would probably do is nick a hallway off there. Uh, you've got a window here. Uh, so maybe put your bed on this wall, something like that, obviously to scale. And then in the old kitchen, what I would do is I would put in, uh, probably put in a shared bathroom. So take up most of that space again you know like shower here toilet whatever uh, bathroom and then you could even have like a utility cupboard in here so you could have like laundry and some storage space um, so that could work really well you could get you know a boiler in there free up some space in the communal space uh, then upstairs I'd go with the same layout as before with three large bedrooms so one at the back one in the middle one at the front um, you could even make these all on suites. You could get rid of this bathroom entirely. So if we got rid of that, there's plenty of scope here. What you could maybe do is actually bring that across there um, and have an en suite for this bedroom. So you get rid of this door. This space could become en suite for, uh, so let's put a toilet here, shower here, sink here, and a little door uh, there. So that could become an ensuite and then you could have another ensuite backing onto it to keep plumbing nice and easy with shower, sink, toilet and a door there, whatever, this way. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so, and you could even probably get, if this was all your bedroom here, uh, you could get an ensuite in here somewhere as well. Maybe where that walk-in wardrobe currently is with like a curved shower, uh, toilet there, little sink there. Perfect. So you've got three ensuite bedrooms on your first floor. If you wanted, uh, you could probably even add a seventh bedroom somewhere. Uh, maybe even an eighth bedroom if you wanted to get really crazy. What you could do is instead of having this shared bathroom down here, you could again put an ensuite back to back with that one. Um, these rooms may be starting to get a little small, but you know technically they would be big enough. Um, so bedroom, bedroom downstairs with en suites, uh, probably make this, so leave enough space for a corridor here and make this into a bedroom, maybe with a little en suite. I don't know if that would fit, but we could certainly try. Um, and then if not, if that didn't work, what we could do is go back to the shower room downstairs. So uh, have a little off suite for this bedroom, which means it's exclusive use, but uh, it's not attached. And then in the loft, if we really wanted to get fancy, so that would be seven bedrooms, I think, if I've lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the loft. But what we could actually do is put a dormer on the back here uh, and then split this into two bedrooms somehow. It would work. There would be space for it. Um, but 
for me, that's overdevelopment. I think the balance of bedrooms to communal space would be out of sync. I think six with that communal space is good. Going up to seven or eight, it would be a little bit too many people for the size of communal space. Um, and also adding a seventh bedroom or an eighth bedroom would mean a planning application for change of use was required, bringing in additional scrutiny for things like parking requirements and adding months onto your schedule as well as the uncertainty. So for me, it's not really worth it in my opinion. I would go with the six bedroom layout one in the loft, uh, probably uh, three on the first floor. Yeah, okay, I, I totally lost my train of thought there. One in the loft, three on the first floor, and then two on the ground floor. I was like, how is one plus three plus two six? But I can assure you one plus three plus two does in fact equal six. Um, so forgive my little maths brain fart there, good. Six bed HMO would probably have been the option that we had gone for. And then the final option we considered was splitting the house into two apartments. Uh, in this case, uh, they're both duplex. Nope, duplex, if I could spell. Uh, I often get asked what's the difference between a flat and an apartment. Uh, as far as I know, nothing. I just think apartment sounds slightly better from a marketing per point of view rather than a flat. So I just tend to call them apartments, but to all intents and purposes, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. Um, but yeah, this was the final option that we considered. Uh, and for this option, there's not a huge number of different layouts that we really needed to consider uh, because we're pretty happy with the sort of main obvious option that does exist. So the lower apartment would basically mirror the HMO layout with two bedrooms. So uh, on the ground floor, we would have bedroom one, which would probably be the master, bedroom two. Uh, you would need a corridor through this bedroom, making it a little bit smaller. So your door here would come, this would actually be bricked up because the entrance into the lower apartment would be from the back. So that's from a back door changed into your main door. You got two bedrooms on the ground floor, keeping them out of the cellar. Uh, downstairs in the cellar, you would have your open plan space again. Uh, let's just be a little bit different this time and put the kitchen here uh, and your, uh, your, your lounge area, maybe like here, whatever, uh, TV on the wall, dining table again if you wanted. Uh, you could possibly put a downstairs toilet in here, but you know, if you wanted to get really funky, uh, maybe have this as like a little wine cellar. I kind of like that idea. Uh, there are bottles of wine, in case you couldn't tell. Anyway, you've got some space there. Uh, you could use it for whatever you want, storage cupboard, whatever, but I think a wine cellar would be cool. And then the kitchen, again, you would probably split that. Uh, so you'd need to leave, you, you might even move the back door over here. I don't think you'd need to necessarily, but um, you need to keep an entrance hallway there and then probably a bathroom here. So big shower there, which would be quite nice. Uh, sink, toilet door and then uh, another door here into your laundry cupboard boiler room blah 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 so there's a nice two bedroom apartment it's kind of like a typical terraced house except it's only half of a terraced house which is kind of cool and then the upper apartment would be accessed from the front so this would remain a door but this would be for the upper apartment so both flats have got sort of main door entry which is nice and we'd have to soundproof the heck out of this wall um, just to make sure that people running up and down those stairs weren't impacting what's going on on the ground floor but that's fine that's a relatively easy thing to do um, and we've actually got a few more options upstairs versus downstairs in terms of how we split it up but we would likely put the master bedroom in the loft uh, so again loft You've got the stairs coming up here, bup, 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 which are coming round. So your hallway, you'd come up the stairs from the ground floor to the first floor, and then you'd go bup, 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 and then your stairs would start here again and go up into your loft, which would be a nice master bedroom with some veluxes and stuff like that. Maybe an ensuite depending on the size, but probably not essential. 
And then I would probably put the second bedroom here at the back of the house. Um, it just keeps it away from the front where all of your street noise is going to be. So it just makes it a bit more uh, habitable, I guess. Just a bit more of a pleasant room, a bit quieter. Um, I'd then probably put the bathroom here in this layout. So you've got a window here, so you'd have a nice bright bathroom. Um, and then, yeah, basically you've got all of this space, you know, part of this bedroom and the, mass, the old master at the front as communal space. Now you could make this open plan quite easily and have like a sort of L shape. You could probably even nick a bit of this uh, as, you know, a laundry cupboard again. So you have your washer and your dryer stacked at the back here and maybe like some coat hooks or something like that. Space for your Hoover, all the stuff that you need when you're living in well, I was going to say a flat, but anywhere really, you need storage space. So it's always nice to try and fit that in if possible. Um, you could maybe keep the door into your communal space here. Have your kitchen sort of tucked away around this corner. So actually what we'd do is we'd sort of square that off. So your this would be like that sort of shape. These walls would be gone. You could have like a little kitchen here. One, two, three, four, five, six units there. Some wall units, perfect, that's all you need. Uh, and then maybe TV here, I don't know. It doesn't matter, you can put your TV wherever you want. But again, you know, sofa, uh, little tub chair, bean bag, whatever you want. Good little apartment, again. And very easily, we have taken uh, originally what was a two bed terraced house, all it's been sold is a three bed. We've taken a two bed terraced house, with a cellar, with the loft, it's got potential to convert. And we have got either two duplex apartments, which would seriously enhance the value of the property. We have got a six bed HMO, or a cheap four bed HMO, or a very expensive and complex and overdeveloped eight bedroom HMO. Or we've just got a typical single family home, whether we wanted to rent it out or sell it. So hopefully that shows you how a really simple, typical terraced house layout has got so much potential for different investment strategies and different layout options. Now a lot of it will come down to the local market demand and also property values to determine what the best option is. So what we decide for this house in our location in the UK might be hugely different from what you end up deciding on even with the same house with the exact same layout. So don't take what we have said as the only option, there are a lot more options even than what we have covered today, but hopefully it just gives you an idea of how flexible property investing and layouts can be. So I'd love to know which you would pick if you were investing either in our area or in your own area, and also if you'd do anything differently, let me know in the comments, I would love to hear it, and thank you so much for joining us today.